כן. All right, this is from the Kuti Sichot, Chilak Yud Aleph. It's also in Hebrew. On the Pasuk Shalach, Na Biyad Tishalach. What happens? Moses is at the burning bush, and God says, I want you to go take the Jewish people out of Egypt. And Moshe said, I can't do it, God. You know, send somebody else. I can't really speak very well. And God said, don't worry, I'll be with you. I'll be with your mouth. I'll help you. And you're going to take the Jews out of Egypt, and they're they're suffering so much over there. And you're the man, and the time has come. And okay, Moshe. So Moshe says, you know what? Send by the hand of whoever wants. You want to shalach no biad tishalach. Send, please, in the hand of whoever you want to send. In other words, send somebody else. It says in the midrash. Apparently, it's a bit strange. What does Moshe say? Send, please, in the hand of you will send. The midrash says, what was Moshe saying? Moshe was saying to God, Rabbonu Shalom, God, shalach no biad tishalach. Send in the hand of Mashiach. Shuati Ligalot. And there's why send me that I'm going to take them out of Egypt and bring them to Israel and everything like that. Why not just send them Mashiach? I mean, eventually, you know, the Jews are going to sin. There's going to be destruction of the temple. And then, like another 3,000 years down the line, you're going to have to send Mashiach. So I have an idea, God. Send right now Mashiach. Amnon, but because this request of Moshe, God didn't accept it. What did God want? Tavka Moshe, that Moshe, only Moshe should be the Shaliach, the emissary, <coughs> take the Jews out of Egypt. The Divra Midrash, from these words of the Midrash movement, it's understood. There's a special connection between Moshe and the Mashiach. That what? Because of that, Moshe, he was the one that said, Moshe said, Shashlichos begulato, taking the Jews out of Egypt should be, <clears throat> Shehutla alav, should be in the hands of the Mashiach. <clears throat> now, once again, who is this Mashiach that Moshe wanted? Did he want somebody else to go? That's what it sort of seems like, right? Well, so let's see. Ella, Mikom, Akom, nevertheless, right? That Tzarech Leo, there has to be the redemption of going out of Egypt first. Al Yudei Moshe by means of Moshe. And the whole idea of Mashiach would be the redeeming of the Jews and the last redemption, which is has to come any moment now. I mean, listen, I if we told ourselves this before, and through all the generations since the second temple has been destroyed, especially two thousand years, for sure now we have to say it, because the situation now is worldwide confusion. This connection between Moshe and the Mashiach, because of this comes uh, <coughs> oh, because of this comes the Tzad Shava and the Tav Kidem. What is the connection between Moshe and the Mashiach? Well, one thing that they have in common is their Job, the goal of Bnei Israel to redeem the Jews from exile. Move, and this is understood. What it says, the rabbis say, Moshe is the goal. Rishon and Moshe is the goal. Achron. It says that Moshe, he is the first redeemer, and he will be the last redeemer. That's what the rabbis say. Right? Where do they say this? They say it in Midrash Lekach Tov Shmot. <coughs> What is this number? This is a three year. It's very small. <clears throat> it says, Shemot Rabbe in the Midrash. And also another place. This says, Moses was the first redeemer and he's the last redeemer, which sort of makes sense because, you know, going out of Egypt was, you know, it's amazing. There was nothing like that in the history of the world and there never will be anything. You know, take a whole entire nation from abject being slaves and that they received God's Torah. God spoke to all of them, 
all the Jews heard and saw God. It says face to face, pun in the pun in. When was there ever such a thing like that? And even the, like we talked about a lot of them, even the other religions don't even claim that their leaders, that they're their founders of the religion, they had such things that God talked to them face to face, told them exactly what he wants to write, exactly what. And here we talk about the whole entire nation. So there's nothing so and it was all because of Moses. So just like Moshe did that back then, he's going to do it again. He's going to show how the Jewish people are special and God wants them. He may ain't appear, which doesn't mean that Moshe himself will be the redemption. It doesn't mean that Moses himself would be. Can't possibly be. Why? Because Moshe, he came from the tribe of Levi. Right? Levi. <clears throat> he was supposed to be the, the, the Kohen and the Kohen Gadol and everything. And eventually his relatives, they became the Levi, Levites and Aaron, they became the Kohanim. But nevertheless, they all came from Levi. And Mashiach, <clears throat> we learned what last week when we talked about the blessings to Yehuda, he's going to come from Yehuda from Shevet Yehuda from David. So it can't be the Moshe himself is going to be, but what does it mean? Shem Moshe who Goel Rishon, he's the first redeemer, who who should be Kochov, that by means of his power and by means of him will come the Mashiach to re be the last redeemer. <clears throat> now, this is very important that we should, the Rambam says in the end, this is a law. And anybody that doesn't believe in Mashiach and wait for him to come, he denies the whole Torah. <clears throat> so Mashiach is a very, he doesn't say that about any other commandment, even though it's true. But he doesn't say that about any other commandment. Abir, <clears throat> the explanation is the Torah, what is the Torah? The Torah is <clears throat> the main, the first and the main quality of the Mashiach. Hoga Torah. So the main thing of the Mashiach is that he will be <coughs> <clears throat> working hard at Torah. The whole ability and power of the Mashiach to be the redeemer of the Jewish people is by means of the Torah. Shehi Torah, Moshe, this is the Torah of Moshe. Moshe Kibbal Torah, Misenai, Torah, Zechar Torah, Moshe. The Torah is connected to Moshe. Moshe received the Torah. He gave it to the Jews. The king al Kocham Shi Israel, all the power of the Jewish people to bring the future redemption and the services only according to the Torah. <clears throat> so if so, that's why Moshe said to God, You want me to take the Jews out of Egypt? Send the Mashiach, let him do it. What's Moshe connected to the Mashiach? Let God do what he wants to. What are you mixing in, Moshe? So because Moshe was the, the whole essence of Moshe was to bring the Torah. The whole essence of the Torah is the power to bring Mashiach. What's Mashiach going to do? He'll fill the world with Torah. The whole world will see the holiness and the godliness in the commandments and every word of the Torah, how amazing the Torah is. Sheikh Hospinim is this connection between the Mashiach and Moshe. This is also hinted at that the coming of the Mashiach, it says, Yavo Shilo. That was the blessing to Yehuda, right? Yavo Shilo. Ad Kiev Oshilo. Rashi says over there, that's the Melech Mashiach. Remember, we learned last week in Parshas uh, Zota Bracha, it was a blessing that <coughs> Yaakov gave to, the, to, to Yehuda. <coughs> that he said that Yehuda will be the leader until Shilo comes. Who is Shilo? Shilo is the numerical value of Mashiach. Shilo is the gematria of the word. Shiloh, Yavo Shilo is Mashiach. Aj Yavo <coughs> Shilo is Mash the same Gamachi as Mashiach, right? Add 13 to Shilo, and it comes out to be the same Gamachi as Mashiach, 158. And the word Shilo itself, <coughs> without the Yavo, is the Gamachi of Moshe. Ki Yavo Shilo, when will come Shilo, namely <clears throat> the revelation of Mashiach and his actual arrival of the Mashiach is the Gematria, <clears throat> the Giloi, the revelation of the Mashiach, and is actually coming, namely Mashiach, and Shilo is Moshe, namely Yavo 
Shiloh means will come, will arrive. Yavo means will arrive. Shiloh, that's the Mashiach. That's when he will come. And just the word Shiloh itself is the Gematria of Moshe. So Moshe, that's Shiloh. And Yavo Shiloh will come. Shiloh Moshe, that's Mashiach. And there's the whole purpose, namely, there already was before <clears throat> Mashiach comes, there will already be the potential for the coming of Mashiach will be in Moshe. And it was take the word Moshe and add the word Yavo, he will come. Moshe will come, the ability for more, the ability to arrive <clears throat> is already in Moshe. And when you add that Yavo will arrive, comes Mashiach. He may behold, you do it's known, <clears throat> the Sikha, the speech of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Yavo Shilo is also <clears throat> in the Gematria, Yavo. The word Yavo, <clears throat> Shilo, the word Yavo is 13. That's the same Gematria as the word Echad, <clears throat> that God is one, 13. Moshe, if you add on Moshe with one, same thing as Yavo is Mashiach. Okay, what's this mean? What does it mean? It means very simply, Hainu Shabiato Shel Mashiach, the arrival of Mashiach. <clears throat> and again, right, no one dreamed that Moshe would come and take them out of Egypt. But he did come, and this was the essence of Ju Judaism. Because of Moshe, we got the Torah, and we're here today. Also, we can't dream, we can't imagine what Mashiach is going to do <clears throat> to bring everybody, but Mashiach is going to come. The power to, of Mashiach actually coming <clears throat> came from Moshe. And that's the power of Echad. Yavo, this is by means of serving God in a way of Echad, of oneness, the power to bring about this revelation, which was given to us, the potential which was given by Moshe, this is by our serving the one God, namely, and making God one. Therefore, Moshe, <clears throat> that Moshe is the, given the ability to do this with Echad, is the Gematria of Mashiach. <clears throat> so in other words, Mashiach is not just an idea. Mashiach is a, the, the most practical and real aspect of Judaism. It's the whole existence of Judaism. It's like having, having a baby. <clears throat> you can learn anatomy and you can learn physiology. You can know all of the aspects of giving birth and how the child develops in the, in the womb. And then all these things about psychology and the parents of the relationship to the children. And all these things you can learn right, about how, the, how the, 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 the reproduction process is and how the, 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 the egg is fertilized and all these amazing things. Right, you can learn, but the main thing is the actual child. The same thing, Ju Judaism. Judaism, everything is important. The Torah is important, and Moshe is important, and the commandments are important, and Israel is important, and everything. But the whole essence of the whole thing is Mashiach. <clears throat> That's the actual birth of the Jewish people will be through the Mashiach. Omer Zal, the, role, the rabbis say, what's the explanation? The explanation is what? <clears throat> that we have to put together Moshe, and Yavo arriving, and Echad, God's oneness, and all this adds up to Mashiach. Let's explain this. The rabbis say, Olam al Melo'u Nibra. When God created the world, he created the world complete. Hainu Kasher Nibra Olam, when God created the world, everything was there. But afterwards, there was the sin of the tree of knowledge. Shavon Nachash came along the snake. And he convinced Chava. Some people say he raped her. And he put inside of her poison. And because of this, man and the world came down from its completion. And until the time of Matan Torah. But then everything will go up from its descent. Because Yisrael, that stood on Mount Sinai, it says the world came back the way it was before Adam sinned. There would have been no death. They got rid of the serpent. The shuv, and afterwards, by means of the sin of the agil, by means of the sin of the golden calf, came down more impurity to the world. It returned. 
it's in the world until finally the Mashiach will come, the future redemption, and take us out of this spirit of impurity. That's also what Moshe did when he took the Jews out of Egypt, when he got the Torah, as the, the sin of Adam, that he brought death into the world, was ended. When Mashiach comes, then <clears throat> all of this death and impurity and egotism will end totally, and the world will be purified and will be refined, the Yit'ala, and will be elevated to the highest level of elevation. Hini, it's known that Yerida Tzarech Aliyahi, that every descent is for an elevation. <clears throat> now we have to understand, this that Adam sinned, and that the Jews sinned with the golden calf, in some weird way, this was part of the plan. I mean, God is above time, and when he created everything, he created it, <clears throat> you know, all created time also. So everything that was going to be in some way was created. But nevertheless, man has free will, total free will. And when he used it wrong, this is totally not understandable. We're talking about God here. We're not talking about a movie or something. <clears throat> this is not like a science fiction book with levels of, the, this is talking the creator of all being, he created, okay, so that, the, the Jews, the main thing by God is this physical world and the Jews in it and the people that are in it. And we see that Adam ate from the tree, there was a sin, there was death. Afterwards, there was, Moshe came along, fixed everything up. They got the Torah, no more death. The Jews sinned, all another time, death, confusion. And, but there's a general principle in the world that every descent and every mistake is for the sake of an elevation and a correction, a higher level. The whole purpose why there was any descent from a level, the previous level, is in order that it should raise up. The whole creation of the world was a big descent. Putting the soul in the body is a descent. I know moving. So if it's true that every descent is for the sake of a higher elevation afterwards, so it's understood, Shaliyah Sha'akra Yerida that the elevation, which is after this descent, must be higher than it was before the descent. We'll move him this, so it's understood from this. I mean, if the saying is true, uh, uh, right? We're saying a person becomes blind, is that because of this, he can raise up to a higher level than he was before he was blind. Is that true? It says that, that that's the saying. We have to utilize this. It's true, but we have to do it. Moving I mean, God forbid we should be blinded. A terrible thing. That's a descent. Nobody wants a descent. It says the Rebbe, if it does occur, we have to say that it was, that's the way it was supposed to be in order to be an elevation, but we have to make the elevation. A descent is a descent. We can understand that this, the level of the elevation, which was by means of the receiving of the Torah, which came after the sin of the tree of knowledge, is somehow or other higher than the way it was before the sin of the tree of knowledge. <clears throat> before Adam ate from the, the tree of knowledge, the world was perfect, wonderful, no death. When he ate, the world descended. When the Torah was given, that was the elevation that came after. It must be higher than the world was before Adam sinned. The Vada, certainly it is now. Now we've already been descending for the last 2,000 years, even more after the descent, after the sin of the the, the eagle that was 3,300 whatever years ago. We've been descending 3,300 years. Certainly the elevation that's going to be is even higher than it was when the Torah was given. Because a descent is for the sake <laughs> And this elevation, this new whatever it is, revelation that's going to be of good and purity and godliness regarding what it was before this is going to be more powerful, whether we're talking about the revelation of godliness from above to below, and also because of our ability, the Jewish people, from below to above, we will be different. Not only will there be more godliness in the world like it was in Mount Sinai, it'll be greater than it was at Mount Sinai, but the Jewish people will be in a higher level of awareness even more than it was when they receive the Torah. Kamushim, it seems like we find in of Matan Torah. In Matan Torah, it says that even though <clears throat> Shagam Kodam before Matan Torah, the Jewish people were also had the power to do the commandments. Like the Rambam said, Al Shisha Devorin Nitzabu. There were six things that Adam 
Ay. First thing, the six things that man was commanded before the Torah was given. Six things that man was commanded before the Torah was given. <clears throat> <clears throat> that man had the so if so man had the power to do commandments. Then came along Abraham, and Abraham added on a few, and Yitzchak and Yaakov they added on a few of the commandments. <clears throat> the rabbis say that the fathers, the Avos, they did the whole Torah before it was given. So if so, the Jews had the power potentially to do the commandments, and actually they were doing something. But nevertheless, Davka when Matan Torah when the Torah was given, there was renewed the power. A tremendous power, not just in the commandments themselves, but what the whole idea of that the God that God chose the Jews. This is free choice choosing of the Jews. And this was God chose the Jewish people at Mount Sinai. <coughs> this was infinitely higher than before the Jews went into Egypt and got out of Egypt and the Ten Command and had the, the, the seven Noah commandments and the other commandments. So when the Jews got the commandments at Mount Sinai, that was much higher. It came, and also it is in redemption to the Jewish people. The Jewish people, when they got out of Egypt, they were a much higher level than they were before they went into Egypt. That even though that by means of the sin of the, and now so it is now, even though that by means of the sin of the golden calf, it says that came death back into the world, and there came death to the Jewish people as well, but nevertheless. And it, the, this level of impurity wasn't like it was before Matan Torah. That Matan Torah was a much deeper level. We see God had to destroy the whole world. Because before Matan Torah, all right, but Darga Nailit Yoter, the highest level that there could possibly be <coughs> before Matan Torah, namely before Adam sinned with a tree, Haina Shapula Tohayata Penimit Bechoderet Yoter. As high as man was before he sinned with the tree, with the eating from the tree, is it wasn't as high as the simplest Jew was at Mount Sinai. When, because then godliness really permeated every Jew. Lohan, therefore, Gam, Biorida Shalachaka, Dayan Nikeras Pula. So, therefore, even after the sin of the golden calf, which was a tremendous descent. But nevertheless, the, the elevation that occurred by Matan Torah was still recognized. Here we are, right? We're still doing Torah and the commandments. To a certain degree, the Torah and the commandments that we're doing is higher than what Adam was doing before the sin. So we see that this descent that occurred by means of the Jews <clears throat> going into Egypt and then afterwards sinning with the golden calf, right? Nevertheless, the elevation that happened in the meantime of receiving the Torah this caused something that was even higher than before the, the Adam sinned with the tree. That was, we were higher now in some ways even more than what Adam was. Why? Because of the descent that we made. Because of this. <clears throat> okay, and so it's going to be also in the coming of the Mashiach, right? It's coming of the Mashiach, which is after all this tremendous descent, now we have an exile. The coming of the Mashiach is going to be even a higher revelation as we're going to talk about more God willing, tomorrow. <clears throat> Let's just briefly do the yom yom. <clears throat> Thank God we made it through all these technical, weird difficulties that there are. Yesterday I forgot to turn on something, and today there was the power shortage, and, and the simplest things can become complicated, but we can, it's all a Yerida Latsurah Aliyah. All this descent. <clears throat> okay, today, Kov Base Tavis, uh, the, um, the, the father of the previous Rebbe said, just like putting on tefillin every day is a positive commandment from the Torah, and it is a, it's applicable to every single Jew without any difference whether a person is a big genius or he's a very simple Jew, also is an obligation for every single Jew to think every day, a half an hour, about educating his children and doing everything which is possible and all of his power 
and even more than his ability to bring about actually that the, by the children that they should go <clears throat> they should go in the way which the Torah says we should think about it <clears throat> take it to heart okay God willing we'll meet together at 3 o'clock today God bless you all and we'll see each other with Mashiach now. Shalom Brachah.